this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, send your word, O Lord. Let your word heal all our diseases, O Lord. Let your word bring about life to everything that is considered dead in our life, in our home, in our marriages, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I surrender myself unto you, O Lord. Have your way, O Lord. Father, we want to see Jesus. I am lifted up. Not any man, not any woman, O Lord. Father, have your way this morning, O Lord. Let your word transform, change us, and heal us, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I want to bless the name of the Lord for all of us that make it to church this morning. The Lord say, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank God for your life. The almighty God will move you forward. Every spirit of backwardness, the almighty God will deliver in the mighty name of Jesus. In every area that you have been experiencing, one leg forward and three step backward, the almighty God, God of restoration, will restore you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, he will breathe the breath of life upon you. He will breathe the breath of life upon your income, upon your life, upon your marriages. In the mighty name of Jesus. Most especially, we breathe the breath of life upon your health. Your health will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. But when you believe, there's nothing God cannot do. So this morning, power must change hand in the life of someone. In the mighty name of Jesus. We know that today is the day of prayer. And we will pray as in touching heaven. And every area that we need the touch of God. The almighty God will touch you and high. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the topic that God asks us to discuss this morning. Because no topic that I will ask God. God, what do you want for your people? What do you want me to talk about? And I look around, I look around. God say. That in fact, I'm the God of increase. I'm set to increase to enlarge. And when I set to increase and enlarge, you know, there is area of our health. When you have good health, you will experience enlargement. You will experience divine increase. I pray for divine health for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, believe God for your healing. That's the topic we have this morning. Believe God for your healing. And we are going to look at uh, one character in the Bible. As our case study this morning, we are looking at the case of blind Bartimaeus. And not only blind Bartimaeus, we are going to flip the coins again. What of if you say, I don't want to heal you? And what would have happened? You know, we see men of God, great men of God in the Bible. The apron of Peter, the handkerchief, the shadow. They heal those that are sick because they lay them down and as they were going the shadow began to heal and peter was able to raise the dead we're going to see what happened why we people say like apostle to paul that have raised dead we'll not be able to pray for his friend to recover from that healing so that's why i say we're going to flip the coins again but we're going to first of all look you know why is it not why isn't every sick person who is prayed over healed. Because the Bible say, we will pray for the sick and they be healed. Why is it that some you pray you fast and they are not healed? I mean, they are not, they don't recover. You pray over them, you anoint them, you do everything, but the, the, the case was the same thing. It was not like the case of uh, Ezekiah, because Ezekiah was sick. And the Almighty God asked Isaiah to go and deliver the message. Put your house in order because you are going to die. And Ezekiah turned to the Lord and reminded God. And before Isaiah get to the temple gates, God sent message, go back. I've added another 15 years. That is one case. And so why I dear that some Elisha performed so great miracle? So great miracle that he was sick and he died in sickness. But things happen, even his bone, when they bury him, his bone revived the dead body they dump in that, you know, where Elisha was buried. There are different cases in the Bible. 
And I pray that the Almighty God will open our eyes this morning. And in every area we are trusting Him, He will touch you. He will touch me in the mighty name of Jesus. So I put it here. I say we don't know why every sick person who is prayed over is, is over, is not healed. We don't know. You and I don't know. But God tell us in the Bible. God tell us that however, we know that doubts, doubt and unbelief. That's why I say believe God for healing. Doubt and unbelief can hinder his miracle, his working power, his miracle working power in our life. When we begin to doubt him, when we begin to, you know, can he do it, can he not do it, when we don't believe. But there are some people, they believe God for the healing, and God decides still not to heal them. I pray that our case will not be that case in Jesus' name. So when you now look at it, how many of us know that in the town where our Lord Jesus Christ was born, he could not perform any miracles there? Why? Because of familiarity. How is that not the son of carpenter? Mary. We know Mary. Our common Mary. We know Mary. We know he could not perform any miracle in his own city where he's best known. He could not perform any miracle. And when you look at the book of Matthew 13, 58, the Bible say, and he did, and he did not, he did not many mirror, mighty mirror works there because of their what? Unbelief. Because of their unbelief. Let us quickly read the Bible passage for today. It's taken from the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. We're talking of the blind Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52. The Bible says, now they came to Jericho. Who are the day? That's Jesus and his disciple. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timia, sat by the road begging. 47, and when he had, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, 48. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me, 49. So Jesus stood still. I pray that Jesus will stand still for someone this morning in the mighty name of Jesus and commanded, commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise. He is calling you. The people that are trying to shout him down, they are now the messenger that say, cheer up, he called it to you. And throwing aside his garment, every garment of shame, every garment of sickness, every garment of un unsuccessful, every garment of failure, you will yank it off your body this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, and he threw aside his garment. He rose and came to Jesus. Go ahead. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? That is a question. God is asking each and every one of us this morning. What do you want me to do for you? And we know the faith in this man. It is the faith that spurred him to shout the more. The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. I pray you will receive your sight. Spiritual sight you will receive. Physical sight you will receive. The vision that God has for you, you will receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the final one, that's 52. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately, immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. But I want you to pay attention to verse 47. The Bible say, when blind Bartimaeus, he's blind, right? The Bible say, when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus from Nazareth was, was near, he began to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. If you want to bear witness with me, there's a message, I think two weeks ago, by Pastor Femi, the, our youth, uh, youth and teenagers pastor. 
he mentions something about the people, the, the, you know, the man by the pool of Bethsaida, Bethsaida for 38 years. And in the Bible reading, there are three categories of people. The blind, the what, the lame, and who, and the, those who are paralyzed. So we see the blind here. And so we see this one, blind Bartimaeus. He was blind physically, but his spiritual sight was still alert. I pray that your spiritual sight will be alert in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said this blind beggar sitting beside the road had your ear will hear good news in the mighty name of Jesus. Patmos was physically blind, but not spiritually. His spiritual eyes was okay. His, spirit, his spiritual sight was okay. In his spirit, faith was there. What is in your spirit this morning? In his spirit, hope was there. Hope that I'm going to see that I will receive my sight is there. In his spirit, believing for restoration was there. Are you believing God for restoration this morning? And the almighty God will restore you in the mighty name of Jesus. So the Bible says for the fact that he was physically blind, his spiritual vision was alert. And I know, he may be believe inside him. He has say, one day, ah, open the eyes of my heart, oh Lord, that I may see you. He must have been praying. And that is why he strategically, that, what of if that day he refused to go and beg? The day of his testimony would have gone by. I pray for us this morning. The day of your testimony will not pass you by. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you this morning. That the almighty God will keep your spiritual you know, hearing alive. And you will hear great and mighty things. In the mighty name of Jesus. What, not only that his spiritual, he has that spiritual vision. To know, to hear. But the Bible say the fact that he was, you know, physical, his spiritual antenna was alert. He had. He can see physically, but he had that Jesus was near. Somebody will revive this morning. As you hear in the mighty name of Jesus. Your ear will hear healing this morning. Your ear will hear restoration this morning. Your ear will hear breakthrough this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible makes us to understand that Bartimaeus had. And when he had, what did he do? He cried out. He cried out. He shouted out. Oh, son of David, have mercy on me. I pray that someone this morning will shout out this morning and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. In the mighty name of Jesus. So on the road to our healing, that takes us to the next stage. On the road to your healing and recovery, there are doubters, there are haters. And my prayer is that God is going to use those doubters and haters to let, take you to your next level. Amen. Hear what they say, keep quiet. They were irritated by his shouting. In your place of work, how many people are irritated when they see you? They just, the Almighty God will make them as a ladder, stepping stone to your promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. So on the road to your breakthrough, on the road to the healing, they are doubters, they are haters that want to quiet you. They wanted to quiet him. Shut up. The Bible says the more they try to quiet him, the more what? The more he cry out. We will cry out this morning. And heaven will open on our behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus. So to them, our shout, your shout to Jesus, he is irritating them. So they want to try possible means to shut you up. But you will not be silent. I will not be silent. I will always Worship you as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. So that should be our song. When the doubters and the eater they try to quiet.
They try to shout you down. You should be able to say, I will not be quiet as long as I have breath. I will continue to cry until I see transformation, until I see my breakthrough, until I recover, until I receive my healing. And the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. So you will see that the people, their tendency, we are still studying the book of Job, people that study with me every morning. There was a lot of things, the three friends, and there is this young man, Eliud. Eliud said, now I can talk. And he talked, if you see the way he condemned Job, if it is you or your sick bed, he said, we will slap this Eliud. It's so terrible. And this morning, the chapter we read, he said, because I want to defend God. Job agreed that you have sinned. That's why you are sick. Have you seen people like that? They condemn you. Even when you say, I don't know anything about the dossier. In fact, he shed the crocodile tears. Ah! Lord, we have mercy, Lord. And in any area that we have been partaker of that, the Lord will have mercy and deliver us. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, if you don't know who you are in Christ, there is tendency for you to respond to their shouts and be discouraged. That's the point I'm bringing. If Job did not know the God that he's having, he would have fallen in line and say, ah, maybe I see, no. But we all know the story of Job that whatever God did not permit in your life, it cannot happen to you. It was a permissive sickness. Because busybody devil is roaming around. On another time, we're going to talk about Job, not today. But the point I'm bringing out here is that if you don't know who you are, in Christ Jesus. If you don't know how standing, how you are standing in Christ Jesus, there's possibility that as they are shouting you down, you say, let me agree with them. After all, I've been blind here. Jesus, if you have one dollar, just say, uh, drop with me. Let me just be calling. Because the people, the people around there, they are joining him begging. They don't want him to have his own life. And the almighty God will deliver us. In the mighty name of Jesus. And when you look at verse 48, the Bible says, they say, shut up. Some of the people yell at him, but only shouted louder again and again, oh son of David, have mercy on me. I pray for someone this morning. You will cry out this morning and Jesus will stop and add your cry. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you look at verse 49, when Jesus had, he's telling me something. Jesus does not move with the crowd. If he moved with the crowd, what would have happened? The people of Israel would have perished in the wilderness. Because out of the 12 spies, only two people came with good reports. The remaining 10, they, it's not that they call them that they, are, they use their own mouth to say that we are like a grasshopper. We are like grasshopper. If God moved by cloud, they would have been grasshopper and perish in the wilderness. But thank God for the testimony of Joshua and Caleb. Whose testimony, whose report are you going to believe in that situation? I beg you, hold on to the report of the Lord this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you hold on to God, Jesus will hear you. He will pay attention to you in Jesus' name. The Bible says when Jesus heard him, he stopped there in the road and said, tell him to come here. And at times we think we are, we are crying. It's not how loud, how your voice can go that we pay attention. You can imagine what's the crowd like. Because the Bible tells us the crowd that follow Jesus, they are in thousands. If not, you wouldn't have filled how many? 5,000 people. So you can now imagine the cry of one person. Out of thousands following. It would have been just a drop. You can't even, it's not even a drop of pain in water. He's seen, but because Jesus was moved by spirit, he doesn't move by the crowd. He's moving by the spirit and by faith. Those who have faith. And that is why the woman with the issue of blood was able to talk. The woman knew that the crowd was so much. And there is no way he can press on or to say, Jesus, pray for me. Remember, Jesus have a mission in that chapter, in that story. But the Bible said this woman, 
pregnant son. She did not shout. They did not because she has drained brain. All her blood has finished. All the physicians have taken all her money. And the Bible says just touch. She strategically positioned. She knows the road where Jesus and she touched by faith the hem of his garments. And Jesus that was going because this woman did not. Jesus stood still too concerning that woman. And said somebody virtue gone out. Somebody must have touched me. I pray that Jesus will stand still concerning your cry this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus will beat someone to come and be healed this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you this morning. There will be a change of garments. That's the next thing. There will be a change of garments. Both in physical realm and spiritual realm for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. There will be a change. And that leads us to verse 50. The Bible says, but me us yank off. One of the Bible, my own Bible says, yank off his old clothes. What are those old clothes that will not allow you to get to your destiny? I mean to your miracle that God has designed for you. What are all those old, old coats? Coat of shame? Is it the old coat of shame? Old coat of despair? Old coat of sickness? Old coat of delay or failure? The Bible says he flung the clothes aside. And what happened when he flung this? What, what did he flung? This morning I'm telling us, brethren, what is delaying our healing is, you know, if you have not been able to flung aside the hatred. Flung it aside. Flung aside malice. Flung aside quarrel. Flung aside backbiting. Flung aside evil thoughts and evil plotting. Then your miracle has just started in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says he jump up. He jump up. Throw the clothes away. Yank the clothes. Flung it. Different word there. Throw it away. I pray this morning that you will jump up this morning and you will run to Jesus, the deliverer, the healer, the helper and the lover of your soul in the mighty name of Jesus. You remember I said there are two aspects. Now let's look at the other aspects. This is someone, Bartimaeus was done, one begging. You know, we all know the story very well. But this particular one I'm about to say, we don't know it too well. We don't know it too well. And let us quickly open to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 20. We're going to read 20b. What did the Bible say? 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 20, technical. The Bible say, I left Tromphemus sick at Miletius. Who, is talk, who was talking there? Who was talking there? I'm giving us Paul. Paul was talking there. Heretius staying in Corinth. But from Phimus, I left him in where Miletius was sick. These are the people. This is one of the persons that was on missionary field with Paul. And we all know that Paul has raised the dead. And that is why I say the flip side this morning. We know that Paul has raised the dead. He has sealed the sick. Why on this particular friend that on some the missionary journey, he was able to lead Heretius in Corinthian. Maybe, but he said he left him in Trifolos, in, I mean in Miletius, sick. We don't know. Maybe physical sickness, spiritual sickness, or whatever sickness it may be. But that was the account. The question now is, why would Paul, who has raised the dead, leave a friend sick instead of praying and see him healed? That would have been, some people would get angry. What kind of a person is this Paul? Why will you do that? Somebody on the missionary journey, you put someone in the ministry there. Now this is somebody that's supposed to stand. Why will you not stand and rebel and make sure that he's healed? You that you have raised the dead before. There are many things about God 
we don't know. You remember I started with that. There are many things about God that we don't know. But this morning, I want us to focus on the one aspect of God that you and I know. And that aspect you and I know is in the area of his word. When you look at the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. Exodus 15, 26, say, he says, I am the Lord that he let thee. You want to hold on to that word. I am the Lord that he let thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word, and my word healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. We want to hold on. That's one thing we know about God. His word is yes and amen. And when you open with me to the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. He said, for I am the Lord. I change it not. It doesn't change. And when you open to the book of Hebrew 13 8, we should know that one. That is the motto for redeemed Christian church of God. He said he is the same Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. So we can go to him for healing based on his word. Based on his word. Are we saying, Paul, that you know the best did not go to him based on the word? He would have received the word. And so what we do know, don't focus on the aspect that you don't know. Focus on the aspect that you do know, which is the word of God. And when you look at the Bible in the Mark 16, one of our Bible passage, Bible text this morning, one of the last statements that Jesus made before leaving the earth was in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. He said, and this sign shall follow them that what? That believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So the question this morning is, do you believe God's the ill people? Do you believe? Let us obey the scripture. And what did the scripture say in James chapter 5? When you read the book of James chapter 5 from 13 to 18, yeah, I believe so, from 13 to 18. James said in chapter 5, 13, that is there any sick among you? It's a question. Is there any sick among you? Let him call to the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of, of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. I pray that the Lord will raise you up this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. So in verse 16 to 18, James tells us that we should pray because our prayers have what? Great power. Your prayer have great power as I share with the workers this morning. Number two, God listen and act on our request. That's what James is telling us this morning. And number three, that James is making us to know that if we have a tough time balancing our life, our Father in heaven is saying to you this morning, I am here to do what? To help you. I am here to make a way for all your needs, all your struggle. I listen to your prayer very closely. Will you ask God for help in whatever thing that you are struggling alone? I don't know what you are struggling alone, but only when you trust in Jesus. There's one in, hey, trust in Jesus. I don't know. Choir cannot help me. He's an him. Jesus. Ah, Technica, can you find that him? You will sing it for prayer after the roundup. I give you time to sign. You know, you can work with Evan. So we're going to use that him to round up. Holy Spirit, just drop it. It's not here. 
But Holy Spirit just dropped that aim for me. And as many that know how to sing, we're going to rise up. We're going to sing that song. Will you ask God for help? Or struggle alone? I will choose to ask God for help instead of struggling alone. If I were you, I will ask him. Shall we rise up on our feet this morning? Today is a day of prayer. Shall we rise up on our feet? As we pray, as we ask him in prayers for healing. As we ask him in prayer for divine touch this morning. Psalm 6, I hope technical we slide it. Psalm chapter 6 verse 2. That is our first prayer point. You're going to lift up your voice unto the Lord. And say, my father, my father. Lord, have mercy on me. We're going to cry for the prayer of mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Ah, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. I am fainting. Heal me, O oh Lord. Heal me. Heal me spiritually. Heal me physically. I don't know. Maybe your own healing is emotion. Your emotion I've been tampered with. I'm telling you, emotional, emotional sickness is a terrible thing. Emotional sickness can lead to depression. It can lead to committing suicide. I want you to open your mouth this morning and say, My Father, my Father, Lord Jesus. Oh, heal me emotionally. Heal me financially. Heal me all around, oh Lord. All around healing this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Psalm 23 verse 4. You're going to lift up your voice and say, Father... Even though I walk through the darkness, I will fear no evil because you are with me, O Lord. Let your rod and your staff comfort me, O Lord. On all side, O Lord. All side, O Lord. Let your rod and your, com and your staff, let it comfort me this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Psalm 41 verse 3. You're going to leave a bag technical. Please be sliding it. We are praying with the word of God. Psalm 41 verse 3. You're going to say, Father, sustain me in any area that I am sick. And restore me, O Lord, from my bed of illness, O Lord. Father, sustain me, O Lord. Sustain me in any area that I am sick, O Lord. Restore me from my bed of illness, O Lord. In the name that is above every other name. In Jesus Mighty name, we have prayed. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. Jeremiah 17, 14. You are going to lift up your voice and say, Father, heal me and save me, O Lord. Heal me, O Lord. Heal me, O Lord. Heal me and save me, O Lord. Heal me, O Lord. Every illness, O Lord. Is it high blood pressure? Is it diabetes? There is nothing God cannot do. He is the God that he led us. He sent forth his word. And he healed all our diseases. Father, heal me, O Lord. Whatever is responsible for the high blood pressure. Father, deliver me. Heal me, O Lord. Whatever is, the, the, whatever is responsible for low sugar or high sugar. Father, deliver me. Heal me, O Lord. From any form of diabetes, any form of uh, arthritis. Heal me, O Lord. Heal me, O Lord. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Jeremiah 33 verse 6. Jeremiah 33 verse 6. We are going to cry unto the Lord. And say, Father, heal me and reveal to me abundance of prosperity and security, O Lord. Abundance of peace, O Lord, and truth, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, Behold, I will bring it I will bring it out and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance. Cry unto the Lord. We are praying with the word of God. Say, Father, Heal me, O oh Lord. Revive me, O oh Lord. Bring me to abundance of prosperity and peace, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Book of 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. 1 Peter 2 24. You are going to lift up your voice and say, Father, by your words I am healed. By your word. He said by his stripes. Who stripes? We were healed. Father, by your word, I am healed. I am healed physically. I am healed spiritually. By your word, I am healed financially. I am healed emotionally by your word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 
Let us quickly go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Deuteronomy 32, 39. You are going to lift up your voice and say, Father, in any area that I have been wounded, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, heal me, O Lord. Heal me, O Lord. Look at it. He said, now see that I, even I, I'm he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make a life. I wound and I heal. Nor is there anyone who can deliver from my hand. So you're going to cry, cry unto that God and say, my father, my father, heal me, O oh Lord. Revive me, O oh Lord. Heal me, O oh Lord. Heal me, O oh Lord. In any area that I have been wounded, oh, physically, spiritually, materially, financially, emotionally, heal me, O oh Lord. Heal me, O oh Lord. King of kings, heal me. Lord of lords, heal me. Ancient of day, heal me. Beginning and the end, heal me. Heal my loved one, O oh Lord. But adventure, you have any loved one that is sick. This is the moment to cry for their healing. To for God to have mercy. Blind Bartimaeus say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, O son of David, have mercy on me. Cry for mercy. Mercy for their healing this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. As many that are going through emotional, that are say they are depressed, or whatever they thought of committing suicide, Father, heal them, O Lord. Restore them, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, 27. You're going to say, Father, in any area that my heart has been troubled, let me begin to experience your peace, O Lord. Let me experience, he says, peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Not that the world gives to, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So you are crying unto the land, say, Father, in any area that my heart has been troubled, let me begin to experience your peace. Let me begin to experience your peace. Let me begin to experience your healing in the name that is above every other name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40, 29. Isaiah 40, 29, you are going to say, Father, you give strength to the weary. Increase the power, O oh Lord. You increase the power to the weak. I receive strength this morning. I receive grace this morning. I receive understanding in your word this morning. I receive healing in your word this morning. I receive grace in your word this morning. I receive strength in your word this morning. In the name that is above every other name. In every area that have been challenged in my health. Father, heal me, O oh Lord. Restore me, O oh Lord. In the name that is above every other name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. We are reading from verse. That we are going to slide it slowly. Fast by verse. From verse 19 to 21. So in verse 19. What did verse 19 he say? Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble. You are going to cry out. I don't know your trouble. I am telling you. Pastor they are not with you. They are not witch. It's only what God is a permissive. It's what God permits you to see, you will see. But you, God must have been speaking to you in revelation, in dreams. And you just brushed out that dreams. So I don't know the trouble you are going through. He said, and he saved them out of their distress. You're going to cry, save you. Save me from every distress this morning. Whatever is the distress I'm going through, save you, save me. Save you, save me. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. As I cry out unto you this morning, save you, save me. Save me from all my distress, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 20 quickly, verse 20 quickly. He said, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You are going to turn into prayer and say, my father, my father, you sent your word. Let your word deliver me from any form of destruction, from any form of hatred. Let your word deliver me. Let your word heal me. Let your word heal me. Let your word deliver me in the name that is above every other name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Verse 21 and the last verse here. He said, Oh, that 
that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You are going to go ahead this morning and say, Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your goodness. I want to thank you for your mercy upon my life, upon my marriage, upon my family. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And it's, we're going back to chapter 34. That's lastly, chapter 34. We're going to make some declaration to ourselves in Psalm book of Psalm chapter 34. Ah, I'm starting with verse 17. Verse 17. Is 17 or he said the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and deliver them out of their trouble. You are going to, if they are the righteous, you are going to cry out and say, Father, hear my cry. You are the cry of blind Bartimaeus. Hear my cry, O Lord. Hear my cry, O Lord. Hear my cry, O Lord. Deliver me, O Lord. Out of all the troubles, O Lord, that are facing me, left and right, Father, deliver me. Lord of Lord, hear my cry, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 18, verse 18 quickly. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. I don't know if you have broken heart. You're going to cry unto the Lord. Every adding heart, every heart of unbelief, every heart that will not allow me to believe God, that will make me to doubt if God can do it or not do it. Father, King of kings, break them, O Lord. Break every adding heart, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. I come broken hearted, O Lord. King of kings, Lord of Lord. Father, you are near, O Lord. Let me experience broken heart, O Lord. In every area that I've had in my heart, in believing your word, Father, deliver me this morning. Save me, O Lord. Save me, O Lord. Save me, O Lord, from every contrite spirit, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Verse 19, quickly, because of our time. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Out of what? Them all, not one. I don't know your affliction, but I want you to begin to open your mouth. Pour it, lay it at the feet of Jesus. Lay it at his feet this morning and say, my father, my father. King of King, Lord of Lord. In this area, I'm facing affliction in my job, in my finance, in my business, in whatever area. Lay it at the feet of Jesus Christ and say, Father, deliver me out of them, O oh Lord. Deliver me of all this affliction, O oh Lord. Deliver me, 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 O oh Lord. Oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Quickly, verse 20. Quickly, verse 20. 20 say, he guide all his bones, not one of them is broken. You are going to cry unto the Lord. I will not end up in hospital bed. I will not, let me tell you the testimony. Maybe you don't have my testimony. This is a recent one. I discover, I mentioned it to us. Sometime, you know, I discover that I just woke up and I discovered that I was having pain in my leg. And by all standard, I'm supposed to be on wheelchair. I am telling you. By all standard, by the standard and the report of doctor, I suppose they even asked me to go and do two MRI. I did one for the lower back, then the other one for my pelvic. And you know when the results come, the doctor, you know, he saw me review it. He said, "Have you started pulling on yourself?" I say, "I reject it in Jesus' name." My doctor is a white doctor. He say, "Have you started peeing on yourself?" I say, "It is not my portion in the mighty name of Jesus." He look at the result. He say, "Ah, your pelvic is okay, perfect, but the lower back is as if there is this thing that is there." He say, "So are you click?" I say, "I can bend down. I can go low. I can do everything." He say, "Make sure when I say I go to gym." He said, make sure you don't carry weight. I said, I lift up to 50 pounds when I go to gym because I want to be able to carry, I want to build my muscle. I say I go to gym, good life here. I say I carry weight. He said, be careful. I say the Lord is whatever. He said, I'm going to refer you, you know, to get second opinion because, you know, you know the way, the way you're saying Jesus. I said, do you believe in Jesus? Because I can see your name is Michael. You know, I was the one. I said, do you believe? He said, yes, yes, yes. I said, is there anything Jesus cannot do? He said, 
But I will refer you. I say, no, no, no. That, he refused to answer that one. He said, I'm going to send you to neurosurgeon. I say, I reject it in Jesus' name. He said, they will call you. I say, well, on your own. I rejected it immediately. Because to him, I'm not supposed to be walking. I'm not supposed to bend down. I'm not supposed to lift. And when I say, he said, be careful. I say, what? I say, Bobonti alone, da 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 da. He said, What did you say? I say, Everything in me, I am complete in Christ Jesus. When I go to my doctor's office, I don't go. But when he called me like this, you know, I'm complete, complete in him. I am complete in him. I'm complete in him. So it's always argument or talk. At times he will say, You are the best. One day he say, You are one of the best patients I've ever had. I say, what happened? He said, even he still repeated, he said, you're going to be 56. I said, yes. You are the most healthiest patient I've ever had. I said, because of me, you will not have candidates. You will not, you will short money because I don't go on to every two, two years that they say you have to do. In fact, you will send letter to me to go and do my medical checkup. We don't go. He said, because most of them, high blood pressure, diabetes, is sure whatever is everything. I was even taking vitamin. He said, don't take vitamin that I don't need it. You know, they say, take one a day, 50 plus. He said, my doctor said, don't take it again. So I don't take any vitamin. The only times at times, I, you know, I feel like drinking pop, but I don't drink pop. You know, you say one of I water. If you, anybody come to my house, it's water you will drink. I drink water. But when you see my children, I'm telling you, when you see them running after pop, carry pop here. Yeah, know that they have a mother that denied them of pop. So don't blame them that see a pastor children carry pop, drinking till he drink. They know they will drink all they can drink here. Yeah. When they come home, it's drink water. Right from when they go to school, I don't buy juice box. I don't buy. They have their water bottle. Isaac from kindergarten, from whatever. The teacher said in kindergarten, no juice. I said, please don't give him juice. We drink water in my house. But in September, when we go harvest apple, I have power juicer that I juice apple. Natural apple, I juice it for them. Beets and carrots and apple, they don't like it. I juice it in my house because this is the thing that there's no preservative that I do. So he said, you are the, one of the best patients I have. No diabetes. No high blood pressure. What do you take? I, I say, I eat uh, a goosey soup. What is a goosey soup? You know? So, at times, he just want to, he always use me as an example. So, when he was telling me all these things, he said, I know, I know. I'm go they're going to call you. I say, okay. I pray if they call me, I will not be at work. I'll be able to take their call. And that is what our God can do. I say, that is what your God can do. That is my own testimony. It's God that can, can heal. It's God that can restore. My, some of my children, students that lived in my house, they know there was a time I will walk like this. They say, mommy, just don't dance. I say, I cannot do without dance. And I will dance. I will come on with my dancing partner. They say, mommy, I say, I don't worry. Jesus is in the control. Praise the Lord. What is that thing? That the doctor has given you the report. Whose report are you going to believe? Finally, we are going to round up with verse 22 of that Psalm 34. Then we will pray. Final prayer. Can you quickly slide it? Psalm 34 verse 22. He said, The Lord redeemed the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Sickness will not make you relegate you or condemn you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because what? Because you are redeemed. Your soul is redeemed as a servant, as a child of God. So you are going to declare to yourself and say, my father, my father, because I am your child, divine earth will continue to be my portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Because your word said, those who trust in you shall not be condemned in any area that have been condemned. You see, I look at my case, it's like condemned. For doctor to ask me that, are you deceived? And when did he see me last? I went to complain. I say, ah, it's as if cold, you know, enter my body. He gave me something. He said, ah, that must be a shutdown of nerves. I say, I reject it. 
in Jesus' name. So that was his report. But God turned it around. Open your mouth. I don't know that case. In your place of God, God of turning around, he will turn it around. He will heal your bone. He will heal your flesh. He will heal your muscle. He will heal your nerves. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank him. We thank you because you are great and mighty God. Look at me here. I'm a wonder, I'm a testimony. I'm a testimony of your healing power. Because according to MRI, I am not supposed to stand. I am not supposed to even do anything to bend down. But here I am this morning. All this while, you are misstanding. Defied all their record. Even when the doctor was scared that, ha, 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 ha. I said, this is what I do. I go, I just register at the gym. He said, don't carry load. Ah, Father, King of King, Lord of Lord, you that you heal me. You that you touch me. Father, touch your children, oh Lord. In every area, oh Lord, they are trusting you for healing. Father, divine earth will be their portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are the God of restoration. Restore them, oh Lord. Restore their soul. Restore their body. Restore their spirit, O oh Lord. All grand restoration this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Blessed be to your name, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.